Hey everybody, my name is Brandon, and today I'm gonna to show you how we can set up multi-factor authentication on our Linux devices. Now we're gonna be focusing on three main use cases today, and that is password authentication over SSH, local console logon, and local console logon with sudo behind MFA as well. Now before we get started, make sure that you have the Google Authenticator app installed on your smartphone. We're gonna be using this for multi-factor authentication. The app is free to install and very easy to install, so make sure you install that Google Authenticator application. Now the system that we're working on today is an Ubuntu 20.04 machine, but this process should be very similar across Linux distributions. So to get started, we're gonna run the command sudo apt install libpam Google Authenticator. That's because we're installing the Google Authenticator PAM module. If you're not familiar with PAM, this is Linux's pluggable authentication modules. It's going to allow us to configure different libraries for authentication and configure how we want our users to have to authenticate in different scenarios. So we'll go ahead and install that package. I've already got it installed. Now to set up multi-factor authentication for the current user, we just run the command google-authenticator. This is going to prompt us with a series of questions and we're going to go over a bit of those responses now. So the first thing is, do you want tokens to be time-based? So if we're going to configure this, that means the tokens only be val valid for a certain amount of time. But if you're going to enable this option, which I do recommend, make sure that your system time is up to date. You don't want to have your system time being skewed too much or else your multi-factor authentication tokens just will not work. So we'll go ahead and hit yes for that one. Now, you'll notice that we get a giant QR code to scan, which is going to be very useful in our uh, Google Authenticator application in just a moment. So, uh, and we also get some emergency scratch codes, which you should certainly note down in case for some reason you lose your device, you can use these codes to authenticate with multi-factor authentication as well. Now, the next thing it's going to ask is, do you want to update your Google Authenticator folder? I'm going to select yes. The next prompt is, do you want to disallow multiple uses of the same authentication token? I am going to say yes, I do want to disallow multiple uses of the same token. The next question is about increased time skew. If we want to in increase the amount of time skew that is allowed between the client and server. In this case, I'm going to say yes. It's probably more secure to say no. I'll say yes just for now. So now that we've answered all those questions, we need to go back and scroll up to where it generated that massive QR code for us. I'm probably going to have to actually uh, shrink down the terminal to see it properly. So now is when you would pull out your smartphone, open up that Google Authenticator app, and scan it into your uh, Google Authenticator. So you open up the Google Authenticator app. On the bottom right-hand corner, there's going to be a little plus button. Go ahead and press that, and then click on Scan a QR Code. That's what I'm going to do right now. Then you just need to simply scan this QR code with your smartphone, which I just did. And now that will be added into your Google Authenticator app and we can receive our MFA codes off of Google Authenticator. It's as easy as that. So let's see, I'm gonna increase this terminal back again so we can see things properly and scroll down a bit. Now we have our general multi-factor authentication set up for our current user, although we still need to tweak some of our configuration settings to use that multi-factor authentication. So I'm just going to clear the screen here. Now, the first way that we're gonna set up multi-factor authentication is for our SSH access with a password. In order to do this, we're going to have to edit the PAM configuration for our SSH server. To do this, we can do sudo vim slash etsy slash pam dot d, oops, pam dot d slash sshd, and this is the configuration file for PAM for our open SSH server. Now, at the bottom here, I'm just gonna go down to the bottom of the file and we're gonna add a new line that says auth required PAM underscore Google underscore authenticator dot SO. And that is telling the SSH server to require the Google authentication PAM library. Looks like I have a little typo here. I spelled required wrong. And on that note, make sure that you don't make any mistakes when you're editing these PAM files. If you have a little typo like that or something, it can stop you from authenticating using this module at all. So if this is your main authentication module or something like that, it could be pretty busted. So make sure that you take backups or a snapshot or something before you start messing around with these files. Uh, because if you make a typo or a little mistake, it can definitely come back to bite you. So now let's go ahead and save that file. With that done, the next thing we need to change is our SSH configuration file. So to do this, we're gonna do sudo vim slash etsy slash ssh slash sshd underscore config. We'll open this file up. And if we scroll down here, we're going to see 
a an option about challenge responses where is it here we go we'll see challenge response authentication by default this is set to no we need to set this to yes so that we can use this challenge response based authentication which is our multi-factor authentication so i'm going to change that no to yes and then save and quit that file now we can just sudo service uh, sshd restart just to restart our ssh server so now that we've restarted the SSH server, now if we go to authenticate with a password, we should not also be prompted for an MFA code. So I'm going to SSH to conda at localhost. We're going to be prompted for the password. And then we're also prompted for this verification code, which you'll get right off of your Google Authenticator app. So we'll enter this verification code here and press enter. And now you can see that we have gained successful authentication over SSH. We've established that connection and we're prompted for the password and for multi-factor authentication. So definitely very cool, I think. And it could be a super good security mechanism to not just have SSH exposed with password authentication if you're using that over keys, but to also have that password authentication behind multi-factor authentication as well. So now in order to use multi-factor authentication for local console logins, there's another file that we need to change. So we'd still have to go through and set up all that multi-factor authentication for the user. You could just skip the steps for editing the SSH configuration files. So we do have to edit one configuration file in order to require multi-factor authentication for console logons. So we're just going to do sudo vim slash etsy slash pam dot d slash common dash session. Now, if we edit this, let's see, we'll go into here. And at the end of the file, we're gonna add one line. It's gonna look very similar to the one that we just added for SSH. We'll do auth required Pam underscore Google underscore authenticator dot SO. And now on another note here, there's some other configuration options you can supply when you are setting this up. So for example, uh, if you wanna specify that users who don't have multi-factor authentication don't have to use multi-factor authentication, you could put null okay here and that will tell the module that if the user doesn't have mfa set up they don't have to use it so you know there's a lot of config options you can use and actually if we take a look at the google authentication uh, libpam github repository you can see all of the configuration options that you could specify there all here so you can go ahead and tweak these however you feel necessary i'll also leave a link to this github repo down in the description below if you want to check it out so let's go back to the terminal here. We have our auth required PAM Google Authenticator.so, and we're also allowing users who don't have MFA set up to not have to use MFA authentication. So we're gonna save this file. And now, for example, if I were to go ahead and lock this, so I'll go over to here, let's lock this device. And if I go to log in with the Conda user again, I am now prompted for a verification code as well. So now if I enter in that verification code, we should have access to the desktop. There we go. So now we have that local console login behind multi-factor authentication as well. Pretty cool, I think. Now, I'm actually going to go ahead and just revert that change real quick because the next way that we're going to set multi-factor authentication up will handle the local console login as well. So the next way that we're going to set up multi-factor authentication requirements is for local console login and for sudo access. So if you were to log in at the console or if you were to try to run a command with sudo, you would be prompted for multi-factor authentication. Now we're going to edit the etsy pam.d common dash auth file. And we're going to add the exact same line to the bottom of it. So let's just go down to the bottom of this and we'll add auth required pam underscore google underscore authenticator dot so and again you could add options here like the null okay or whatever other options you feel are appropriate for your configuration and we can just go ahead and save this file now if i were to go ahead and lock this and go to log in again we're prompted for this verification code so i'll go ahead and enter my verification code here Awesome, and we gain access to the desktop just as we expected to. So now let's try to run a command with sudo. Now to demonstrate this, I'm gonna open up a new tab just so that we don't have our sudo password cached at all. I'm gonna do sudo dash i. We're gonna be prompted for our sudo password, and now we are also prompted for that verification code. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at my Google Authenticator app, enter in that code that I see on there and press enter. And now we can execute that command with our sudo privileges. So now I'm just gonna exit out of that. Let's hop back over into our other terminal. And 
That is it. We have set up multi-factor authentication for those different use cases. Now, I do want to make one important note at the end of the video here. If we do an ls-la in our home directory, you're going to see this .google authenticator file. If we were to cat this file, so we'll do cat.google underscore authenticator, you'll see some codes here. Now, these are our scratch codes, our one-time scratch codes that we could use if we got locked out of multi-factor authentication. So this can be really good that you can access them right here in case you forgot to jot them down or anything. But it's also important to remember that anybody who can access this .google authenticator file that's in your home directory can bypass your MFA because they can grab these codes right here that will be valid multi-factor authentication codes for your account. That's all I have for you today regarding Linux multi-factor authentication. I hope that you found this video useful. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.